where the news comes first. Good evening, everybody. I'm C.J. Ward. We begin tonight with the race to the White House. Hillary Clinton is making history. She has enough delegates to become the first presumptive female presidential nominee in U.S. history and clinch the nomination. Voters in six states will go to the polls tomorrow, and Clinton says she still needs their votes. We're going to fight hard for every single vote, especially right here in California. And White House officials say President Obama is ready to officially endorse Clinton and will start campaigning with her soon. On the Republican side, Donald Trump is taking heat from prominent Republicans over his criticism of a U.S. district judge presiding over a Trump University lawsuit. Trump's campaign is urging supporters to defend his stance. And besides California, voters go to the polls tomorrow in New Jersey, Montana, New Mexico, South Dakota, and North Dakota. And that's a lot of delegates up for grabs. News Channel 3's Tracy Lair joins us live from Santa Barbara. And Tracy, you are here to break down the numbers for us. That's right, people are talking about the math, CJ. There are 475 delegates up for grabs in California and 71 superdelegates. That's about 10% of the superdelegates nationwide. And many of them have already pledged their support for Hillary at the start of her campaign. Without adding in superdelegates, Hillary Clinton has won 1,812 delegates to Bernie Sanders, 1,521 through primaries and caucuses. But if you add in 571 superdelegates, she has one more than needed to clinch the nomination. Superdelegates exist because the party does not trust the rank and file. Academics say appointed superdelegates were implemented by the Democrats in 1984 after party losses by George McGovern and Jimmy Carter. I have to understand, superdelegates are made up of, uh, of, of dignitaries, it's one group, of governors and senators and members of Congress, it's another group. I mean, Bill Clinton, by virtue of having been president, would be a superdelegate. I wonder how he's going to vote. When Bernie Sanders started gaining support, his supporters started speaking out against superdelegates. There is a consistent voice that says superdelegates were created to solve a problem, but it's the wrong solution. We need to find a, a different solution that feels transparent, uh, that feels fair. So as long as we have a perception on the general public side that this is an unfair process, their future could be at stake if Democrats lose the White House. As for Republicans, they don't have the same system, but they do have three leaders from each state obligated to vote according to the majority in their state. And tonight, Sanders supporters are angry at the media for adding in those superdelegates before they officially vote at the convention in July. In Santa Barbara, Tracy Lair, News Channel 3. Okay, thank you, Tracy. And many California voters have already cast their ballot for tomorrow's primary. The machines at the Santa Barbara County Registrar Voters Office are busy processing and verifying the ballots. Workers in the election office are working just as hard, surrounded by racks filled with vote-by-mail ballots. They saw a big increase in voter registrations right up to the deadline about two weeks ago. We're excited for this primary. We've seen a surge in registration. It's gone up over 10,000 from 191,000 to 201,000. And what's encouraging is that we've already received 57,000 voted ballots have been returned. And vote by mail ballots can be mailed tomorrow. As long as they're in before the mail pickup, they will get the June 7th postmark and arrive within three days after the election. That is a new law to help with the last minute voters. A Democratic show of force in one part of town today and good old GOP door to door campaigning in another. Last minute stumping brought Democratic heavyweight Kamala Harris to Santa Barbara in support of local candidates. California's Attorney General is also running for the U.S. Senate. Across town, Volunteers for the Republican ticket route and force, reminding voters to get out and cast their ballot. We need to go back to capitalism, to self-improvement, self and for people to be standing on their own two feet and making their American dream. Come we out. have to send a lion. We have to send a giant. We have to send someone who can fulfill the promise of the largest state and the eighth largest economy in the world. And again, polls open tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, and they will stay open until 8 o'clock tomorrow night. 
Now to the growing outrage over a college sex assault case. A star swimmer at Stanford University will spend six months behind bars for the crime. But it's what the swimmer's father said that's upsetting so many people tonight. Matt Gutman reports. Outrage building tonight over a son's crime and his father's commentary. Before Stanford swimmer Brock Allen Turner was sentenced to six months in jail for the sexual assault of a woman at a campus party, his father complained the verdict was a steep price to pay for 20 minutes of action. The dad said, it's 20 minutes for a lifetime of sentence. And I'm like, what do you think the woman had to deal with? But another letter was read in court that day. It was one of the most eloquent and articulate letters I've ever read. I don't think anything like it has ever been written. The victim reading 12 pages, her gaze locked in on Turner, skewering her attacker for insisting the assault beside a frat house dumpster was consensual. Anger tonight sweeping the Stanford campus. Online, nearly six million clicking on her letter on BuzzFeed, many blasting the judge and the father. And tonight, the victim sending this text to the DA. I'm coming to you simply as a woman wanting to be heard. Yes, there's plenty more I'd like to tell you about me. For now, I'm every woman. The probation department recommended that six-month sentence. Now, Turner is already in jail and could be out in three months on good behavior, but he'll remain a sex offender for the rest of his life. Matt Gutman, ABC News, Stanford. A Los Angeles man known as the Grim Sleeper is headed to death row. A jury handed down the verdict this afternoon. 63-year-old Lonnie Franklin was convicted last month of 10 murders between 1985 and 2007. The victims were initially listed as Jane Doe's and the murders went unsolved for decades. Authorities believe Franklin is responsible for many more murders. New tributes tonight for Muhammad Ali, among them his daughter Layla, who of course shares his passion for boxing. And late today, the family announced that actor Will Smith, who played the champion in the movie Ali, will be one of the pallbearers. Ryan Smith reports on the growing list of dignitaries who will honor the greatest. Tonight, those closest to Muhammad Ali, remembering a heavyweight with a tender side. His daughter Layla posting this on Facebook, writing... I was blessed to be touched by an angel. We all were. I felt like he was trapped inside of his body. Um, so I have comfort in knowing that he's not suffering anymore. The champ's youngest son saying his father is at peace. He just wants everybody to be happy and celebrate his life, celebrate his legacy, you know, not um, shed tears of sadness, shed tears of joy. His funeral plans, as only Ali would have it, specified by the champ years in advance. On Friday, a procession through his hometown and a massive public memorial, a growing list of celebrities and dignitaries speaking. Today, the King of Jordan added to the list that includes Bill Clinton and Billy Crystal. The comedian dubbed little brother by Ali, his spot on impression of the champ. I'm so fast I can play ping pong by myself. <laughs> and tonight, generations marking a once in a lifetime figure. What does Muhammad Ali mean to you? Well, he's our hero. He was never scared to speak his mind, and I'm just proud to say that he was from here. Many people wanting to be here to celebrate Ali's life. His family today announcing 30,000 tickets will be available for the memorial and prayer service. Ryan Smith, ABC News, Louisville, Kentucky. And Ali's career and life inspired many local residents, including a Santa Maria, bo uh, Santa Maria boxer who saw Ali as a role model. Patrick Mance trains at Central Coast Boxing. He's been a fan for as long as he can remember. I guess just wanting to mimic who he was, like the way he did things, you know. In fact, even as I trained, you know, I would watch old documentaries of him just to, you know, kind of get the attitude. But I also try to bring it into the gym, too, and be brash and boisterous and, you know, just try to have everyone be involved and engaging. And man says he studied Ali's style and admires how he carried himself in life. Well, most birthdays are a time to celebrate, but friends and family of a Ventura teen killed in a hit and run use this day to fight for justice. We'll have that story coming up. And after a warm end of last week and a nice and warm weekend, temperatures down a little bit today. Santa Barbara topping out at 72 degrees and more June gloom is in your forecast this week. I'll have the details when we come back. Live, C.J. Ward. Chief Meteorologist Alan Rose. And Mike Land Sports. This is KEYT News Channel 3, where the news comes first. 